question of teaching, yes. So, uh, teaching can be available, but not cornering your audience into taking it. I suspect that teaching written down is not or recorded like this, if this is teaching, is not ideal, except that you can walk away from it without any pressure. You can simply flip over and listen or read something else. Even so, I mean, according to the Jesus um, teaching, if you like, <laughs> the Jesus story, um, call no man teacher, if you are now taught of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you do review someone else's view on something, you review it from the standpoint of the Holy Spirit within you, determining whether this is appropriate or not. You're not simply swallowing it because it's some um, reverenced manuscript or, or recording or name that's given to it. You know, they used to, um, yeah, it's very extremely unlikely that John's Gospel is written by anyone called John. Um, if there was a John that was um, held by the religion to be in good repute, the temptation was to say that the manuscript was written by John. <clears throat> and so with any other manuscript. I mean, there may be instances where you're extremely sure that the author was, um, you know, Napoleon or something. Well, okay. Um, how sure are you, you know? But more importantly, even if it were, we're not worshipping the author. We worship God. And our view of God is from the Holy Spirit within, not some teacher without. Of course, if you haven't found the Holy Spirit, then you might be searching around for teachers here, there, and, and anywhere that um, you think might be helpful and reliable. In that case, you probably will find that you are armed with such a variety of opinions, you don't just swallow what you're reading. But there are techniques and ways of persuading people that, you know, I'm a tremendous authority on something and therefore should be treated with awe and respect and you don't disagree with what the expert, the professional says or something like that, you know. That is not what um, the godly person is about. The godly person is concerned only with the worship of God. Everything else is understood in the light of that. And that God, as I've said, is the personification of what you value because you could worship none other. Not really. You might outwardly worship, but you wouldn't be devoted to. So it would lose its value very quickly. If indeed it ever had much. So we don't necessarily welcome other people's opinions. But we do review such in that it may help us at times to reflect on what we think and why we do think that, to be the surer of knowing our God, not their God, but our God. Theirs will still be a unique view, just as ours is, unique in the sense that we have a different history of events that have affected, affected us. We are each individually taught of God in that way. It's homeschool on a tremendous scale. <laughs> it's a very big home. <laughs> or is it a school? I don't know. It is what it is and the rest is just hopefully a helpful analogy. As I see it, and you may see it differently, of course. So we do put things out there. And those that have ears, 
let them hear. And we try not to bother those that would not want to hear. We might think of them as not ready to hear yet. And, well, God's working on it. Day and night, night and day, never stops working. Because <laughs> he loves us all, loves all his creation, as I hold it to be very happily. Thank you, Heavenly Dad.